Alright, so I have with me the latest version of Mac OS X that came out last Friday. Um, Snow Leopard, which is pretty much a more finely tuned version of Mac OS X Leopard, building on, on a lot of um, key features, and it's entirely written in 64-bit. So let's go over the packaging. On the inside you'll find the traditional Apple stickers. You got a pair there. And the small little instructional booklet pretty much describing everything that Snow Leopard builds on and adds. So let's go ahead and install this. Alright, it's detected the DVD. I think we're pretty much ready to go ahead and install OS X. Right, now it's installing and it should pretty much be done in about an hour. Less than a minute remaining and we should be getting some... Oh look, it's already finished. Alright, so the Mac is going to restart in a good, what, um, 25 seconds. But yeah, I'm really curious as to see what exactly Snow Leopard has in store for the Mac, for the operating system, the improvements over Leopard. So, I'm just going to go ahead and restart it right now. I definitely cannot wait. Let's see. Should be starting any second. Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and demo Snow Leopard for you guys right now, so you pretty much get a basic idea of what it does, all the pros, all the cons, everything you need to know about it. So let's get started with the redesigned Finder. Now, as you probably know, it's been redesigned, it's been rewritten, rather, in 64-bit. Um, something new is the ability to increase the size of icons. You can augment them to your liking. In fact, you can um, increase their size up to 512 by 512 resolution which is really good and really works for previewing which is one of the newest features which allows you to preview a, f uh, a video file for example or other files right through their icons so rather than going to quick look and watching it which is still undoubtedly effective you can now preview it through the icon and the ability to increase the icon size just really builds on that makes it a lot more intuitive Another great new feature for the Finder in Snow Leopard is the ability to put things back from the trash. It's very, very simple. So let's say I have chapter 4 of my geometry textbook and it was in my desktop. All I have to do is click put back if I put it in there accidentally, put back, and it goes right back to where it was. It's that simple. So that's pretty much the Finder in a nutshell. I mean, the best parts from it. Next we have the dock. The dock may look the same. It's a little more responsive than in Leopard. It actually works faster. But really one of the key features here is the fact that you can go ahead and use expose from the doc. Let's say, for example, I'm working on some history homework. So I have text edit open and I have Safari open for research. Now, and I had to navigate through them. Seeing how many windows I have open, it makes it a little more difficult. With this new version of expose, it's not difficult at all. Uh, you go to the icon in the doc of your application, and all you have to do is hold it and it'll open the ones for that application only and you can also quit the application from there hide it or uh, show the options and modify things from there which really simplifies uh, having to memorize all these keyboard shortcuts so that is pretty much doc expose another really really amazing feature that a lot of leopard users have been asking for is the ability to navigate icons and applications and everything else from stacks now in leopard you would have to open up finder to see anything that wouldn't fit in the grid view in this case. Using Snow Leopard you can simply drag through and view everything. Not only that, but it's intuitive to the point where you can access folders right on the um, stacks instead of going to the finder and viewing them from there. That is an option now. Not only that, but you can actually navigate through the folders you've been to. Here, for example, I was to go to Canon Utilities and there's nothing. You can actually go back as you would in the finder and navigate it. So it's sort of like a replica of the finder for the dock. It's really, really good. 
As for iChat, pretty much two-thirds less bandwidth and increased video resolution is one of the best things, depending on your connection. If your connection isn't up to par, there's another thing. It's called the AIM or AIM relay server, which acts as a connection between the two computers if their connections are not very good. Safari 4, I mean, it was released as a beta and then as an actual release before Snow Leopard, but I'm still going to go ahead and review it for you guys, make it easier for you to understand it. First of all, JavaScript loads approximately 50% faster with this new version of Safari. Now, that is huge. A huge difference. And it's all thanks to that 64-bit technology I spoke of earlier. A few other key features are top sites, which allows you to see the most recent pages you've seen, the ones you visit the most. Not only that, but your history, you can actually navigate it using CoverFlow, which was only previously available first in I on iTunes, and then the Finder for Leopard. Now Snow Leopard, it's all in Safari as well. So it's a really nice way of integrating those excellent user interface elements into Safari. Well, Safari 4 is more crash-proof than ever. For example, if a plugin for YouTube isn't responding, it's not going to crash the entire thing. Only the portion of the window that uses that plugin is going to fail for you. Everything else is as responsive as it was before that crash. As for QuickTime 10, there is no pro version anymore. You've got a new interface. This is something I made back in 2008. Fiery Chips. It's on, it's on my YouTube channel. Alright. So, the amazing thing about the interface is that it puts your video center stage right there. So if you were watching it, rather than in QuickTime 7 where the controls are pretty much there in your face unless you actually go into full screen. Using QuickTime 10, just click and they disappear. So it's a really nice way of just framing your video for the perfect video viewing experience. Another amazing feature is its integration with iTunes, MobileMe, and YouTube. You can actually work on trimming a specific portion of your video that you want to show. So if I were to just trim this portion, I could actually see that. And the controls pop up back once you're done. So trimming, simple editing is amazing. The sharing, quick capture. Let's talk about quick capture. Quick capture is this amazing new feature that allows you to use your eyesight camera to record video directly from QuickTime rather than going into iMovie, Final Cut, or Photo Booth. But now QuickTime, that's right, QuickTime comes with screen recording. So it's amazing for tutorials like what I'm doing right here. It's even easier than before. It's right up, it's part of your Mac experience. Finally, Color Sync, a very, very proven technology for Mac, is integrated into QuickTime. So now on QuickTime, pretty much it automatically enhances your color, gives you the best experience. Obviously, you're not going to see the best color here because it's standard definition. That was back then. And I record in high definition. But yeah, you won't get the best quality standard, but when it comes to high definition, you'll see the difference. It's cinematic color, cinematic quality. Preview, as you know, is pretty much what you use, with the ex uh, apart from Quick Look, to open um, photos, pretty much. Preview has been very useful so far with things like Smart Lasso and Instant Alpha, but now through annotations you can actually do what you would only do for PDF documents, such as circles, squares, or text entries, something that a lot of Mac users have wanted, you can now do on Preview. It's also compatible with most of your scanners, so you can scan right from Preview. So if I was to import from my scanner, this is a little ancient relic of mine. And after scanning it, you can look at it right there. It's still pretty good quality, and yeah, that is scanning on preview, so it's really, really good and works with pretty much any scanner if it has the, the compatible driver. Next to last, preview can actually determine your time zone automatically. Pretty much like an iPhone or iPod Touch. Finally, although Apple claims that Snow Leopard will pretty much save you an additional 7 gigabytes of hard drive, it actually does more than that. I began with 35 gigabytes of hard drive and now have nearly... 50. So Snow Leopard pretty much saved me about 14 gigabytes worth of hard drive space, which is truly amazing. Of course, this is nowhere near the myriad of features in Mac OS X Snow Leopard, but I'm pretty much showing you the most essential ones, and it's sure to be somewhat useful to you when you're navigating this for the first time. So yeah, I hope this helps. Yeah.